Hi, and welcome back to my shed. My name is Paul Hopewell, and I'm going to show you how I repaired the worn out crossfeed screw on my South Bend 13 lathe. I was in the process of cleaning and assembling the last few components to go back on the saddle and while examining the crossfeed screw didn't reveal much, in fact it looked as to have fair wear and tear. Even staring down the nut didn't reveal much. But when assembled the crossfeed screw had more excess play than a pee and a whistle. At worst it had 1.7 millimetres of play, that's about 67 thou leaving me with no alternative but to find a way of fixing it. I did consider just replacing the nut, that alone would have made a big difference. And it's times like this that I wished I would just stick to the easiest option, but I don't. What I've got here is a bit of bar, it's the remains of an old press ram, and its hardness is between 45 and 50 Rockwell. The screw has a Rockwell of less than 45. So I think this material is well suited if I can cut it without marring the thread faces during the finishing operation. My plan is to hacksaw the Acme screwed section off the whole unit and after making a new threaded section press it into place making the unit hold once more. Simple, or at least that is what I was hoping for, but as we all know this is far from reality. I have decided to make the nut in another video to keep this video as short as possible. What's more, I might alter the design slightly. Anyway, back to this bit of bar. To end and centre it is normal practice. And without spending too much time in the check to see if you've got the kit department, I decided to do the whole thing between centres which would have been a very good way of making this screw, but like I said, I forgot to check the kit box. With the face plate fitted and the Morse taper fitted in both ends, I brought them together to check if they were still on centre, using the rule between two points method. Happy with that, I fitted the only dog drive I had that would fit and bodged it to drive the material. It was only now becoming obvious that this material was going to be a bit of a pain in the ass. A couple of parts of this project can only be best described as not too well thought out. I'm blaming brain farts and old age for this. You can see I've got a following rest that doesn't follow the cutter, it leads the cutter on this setup by about 15mm, which is just under 1930 seconds of an inch, for those of you partake in the Imperial Rule. Unless I fancy making destructive adjustments to the lead screw on this little machine, I'll have to dig my way out of this poorly planned position, and that's exactly what I did. I temporarily changed the tool for a sharp 6mm round nose cutting tool and buried it into the material, machining an 11.7mm thou diameter recess. And then I widened this recess to about 80mm wide, that's roughly 3 quarters of an inch. So, if I hadn't taken this course of action and stopped the first cut at about 25mm, one inch from the jaws, upon resetting the brass pads after every cut to prevent vibration means that the next cut will have to stop 15mm short of the last cut, making the cut stop short of the jaws now by 40mm, one and a half inches, and the next one at 55mm, two and one eighth inches. Clearly this is not sustainable. Having this little recess allowed the tool to finish the entire length of the cut and the pads can do their job. Give yourself a gold star if you've noticed that I've changed the back plate back to a three jaw chock. This is because I was now aware of my shortcomings with regard to the lack of a strong and correct type of drive dog. You can also give yourself another gold star if you notice when I changed the dead centre for a live one. To check the screw, I used a thread pitch gauge to confirm the pitch. Then I made sure that the tool started at the right end of the material to cut the left hand thread 5 8 by 8 TPI screw. 
Also, to cut the acne screw, I decided to rough it out first using a small blue tungsten carbide tool ground to the same profile as the finishing tool but about 0.25mm thinner. About, that's about 10 thou. After setting the compound slide to 14.5 degrees, the tool's cutting edges were even further away from the following steady at about 50mm, that's 2 inches. So before I went any further, I decided to increase the recess width accordingly, totally aware of the risk it poses regarding rigidity. Despite having the following steady fitted, I still had a big problem with the first 50mm of cut, all down to the following steady not being engaged at the same time as the tool. To combat this, I fitted a back post and clamped a narrow steel bar in it to hover 0.025mm, that's one thou, above the screw thread, acting a bit like an extra steady right above the cutting tool. OK, it didn't stop the vibration noise during the first 50mm, but it did help prevent the screw grabbing the tool and climbing all over it until the follower steady fully engaged. It worked so well that I decided to use it with the finishing tool as well. The roughing operation was completed to 1.84mm depth of cut on the compound slide. Full depth on the compound slide is to be 1.9mm, that's about 75 thou, accounting for the 14.5 degree compound angle. This roughing out operation provided an easier track for the finishing tool to complete the screw profile and because the finishing tool was a high speed steel tool it needed all the pre-machining assistance it could get. To set the full size tool into position I used a combination of cross slide and compound slide to position the tool so that it was just scratching the top left corner of the screw thread while manually turning the chock. Once a scratch was detected, I wound the compound slide back out a couple of thou and worked the chuck backwards. Because of the gear train backlash, the tip of the tool then hovered over one edge of the thread crest. That allowed me to use a feeler gauge to gauge the tool position. At this point I zeroed the cross slide and moved the compound slide in by the indicated amount dictated by the feeler gauge and I then set that to zero. Before winding the chock back, I backed off the cross slide as usual. Now with the cross slide at zero and the compound slide advanced by 0.2 millimeters, about eight thou, I hit the go button and held my breath. Now the noise you hear is the screw hitting the guardian post until the follower steady fully engages. Using the machinery's handbook I calculated the dimensions required using pins and just to confirm my calculations I checked it on the least used section of the old thread next to the apron gear. After a couple of decent licks and some spring cuts, I achieved the dimensions I required at a total of 1.93mm on the compound slide. Of course the nut will rattle on the screw, but I had to try it. I don't have any reason other than curiosity. Now that the thread is finished, it's time to cut the excess material off and tidy the end up. It's also time to lop off the old worn out thread from the original unit. The small end diameter was turned down to 439 thou with a 3mm long lead of 437 thou. I put the lead on to assist assembly when I press the two parts together. Now this is where I cleaned up the end of the old shaft. But before I did that I had to be sure that it was running true. Six tenths of a thou run out is good enough, especially without the aid of any jaw shims. At this point in time I had no idea what was about to happen after I'd end and centred this piece. 
Until now, everything was tickety-boo. I've set up to drill a 10.8mm hole, 425 thou, to ream to 7 sixteenths. But as I was cutting, I couldn't help notice that a sliver of material was forming on the edge of the hole. I continued to the full 25mm depth, but when I withdrew the drill, I discovered that I'd bored out a previous repair. It seems that someone had already done what I was planning to do, and to the same 7 sixteenths ream dimension. At this point I felt I was in more trouble than a pregnant nun. But after a quick check I found that my reamer wouldn't quite go in. After removing the slither that lined the bore with some pin nose pliers, I fitted my 7 sixteenths reamer and run it through. It did very lightly polish the bore and the relief on the new screw was a very close fit. So my plan was still a plan. Pressing the two interference parts together had to be done using my 12 ton press. Then I put the newly assembled unit back into the lathe to see how well it went together. There's a little wobble but nothing to write home about. I shall be having a go at making an extended nut to fit this thread. The reason is to spread the wear over a greater length of the screw, hopefully aiding longevity. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.